alaikum viewers. Uh, welcome to yet another episode of the program Organizational Behavior. Uh, viewers, in today's episode, we are going to discuss stress, power, and politics. Uh, we have with us our expert on the subject, Mr. Fawad Bashir, and the students Amna, Abdul Rahim, Alia, and Bilal. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, firstly, if we want to describe what exactly stress is, or I'd, I'd rather say that how to define stress. It's basically a dynamic condition in which an individual has to confront with an opportunity, demand or constraint and since he has to deal with it, the outcome is uncertain but important. Uh, sir, I'll further want you to add up on it. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. As uh, Komal has described that uh, stress is basically uh, a situation which is very important to someone and when it is coupled with certain constraints in a society or in an organization, it creates stress in a, in a human or in an employee. And uh, so far as we uh, as individuals are concerned, we are like uh, have certain pressures in life. We are like uh, uh, have to face certain constraints in the environment as well in the organization as well. So uh, it is very important thing so far as an organization is concerned to manage the stress of an individual or of, of, of groups. Okay. Sir, there are two things that come in uh, while we are talking about stress, constraints and demands. Constraints are the forces that prevent uh, someone from right. doing something, right. whereas demands are the loss of something uh, that should be there or that is demanded. Very right, very right. Uh, as uh, mm, because uh, there are a lot many things in the environment which are beyond control mm -hmm. and there are certain pressures from the organization there are certain pressures from the family from the like uh, dependents so that we have to come up with certain demands we have to fulfill those uh, but uh, towards the way of fulfilling those demands there are certain constraints forces which are restricting us from achieving those things exactly. so again you are very right that these are the main two things which mm -hmm. like uh, lead someone towards stress. How do we manage them? Basically, uh, it's an overall process, uh, stress management process. And uh, so far as we like move towards that, we have to like, uh, uh, first of all, identify certain sources of stress. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, there is a research which shows that uh, people are stressful because they feel overworked. Then they are overwhelmed by the workload. Mm -hmm. It is like contributing 55%, first one was 54%, lack time for reflection, it contributes 59%, don't have time to complete tasks. Mm -hmm. Definitely there comes the role of time management, 56%, and must multitask too much. Mm -hmm. And generally, uh, in organization, it is now uh, very much in that exactly. we are like pushing people towards doing multiple, multiple tasks, tasks simultaneously. Sir, I have a question. Um, sure. What could be the potential sources of stress? Yeah. First of all, first of all, uh, the, the environmental factors, economic uncertainties in the environment and in the business life, life cycle or cycle, political uncertainties in the political system because political instability will also contribute towards like uh, organizational achievement mm -hmm. and success. And so far as we as an individual in Pakistan are concerned, we also know that uh, political uncertainties are like hampering lot many things in our exactly. daily life. Technological uncertainties or technological innovations, mm -hmm. if I know uh, how to use something, mm -hmm. definitely I will not be stressful. But if something is new exactly. technologically, definitely it will create stress, terrorism mm -hmm. and threats of physical safety. And we know it very much. And it's a very novel concept, but yeah. it is very much there these days. <coughs> then, organizational factors are task demands related to the job from the employee, role demands of fluctuating in an organization, here, then um, the interpersonal demands created by other employees, mm -hmm. organizational structure, rules and regulation. If mm -hmm. they are very rigid, definitely they they are a very important source of exactly. like stress. Organizational leadership, leadership style also mm -hmm. matter, and then organizations life stage, growth, stability or decline. Definitely, if growth is there, we have to like cope up with lot many things simultaneously or if uh, it is towards the declining stage, it is also very stressful. Mm -hmm. And the most stable stage, the stability stage, uh, supposedly uh, if there are like stabilities in the organization, norms, rules, regulations, uh, business cycle, then uh, it is supposed that, that there will be less stress. Then okay. comes the individual factors, mm -hmm. family and personal relationships, 
economic problems exactly. faced by that person, personality problems, then come individual differences, differences from also. one to another, exactly. perceptual variations from one to another, greater job experience will reduce it, definitely it's a moderator, social support, if it is there, it will reduce it, if it is not there, definitely this will be like towards the higher side. Internal locus of control lower perceived job stress because you are in your self-control. Then strong feelings of self-efficacy, mm -hmm. which sure. the concept which, which we have already discussed. Yes, uh, anyone has a question? Yes, I have a question. What are the major consequences of stress? Okay. Uh, whenever an individual will be stressful, the first symptom is psychological, hmm. then physiological, and then behavioral. Definitely in psychological symptoms, we no, uh, might not be able enough to like uh, Identify cope, up with, them yeah, or <coughs> cope up with them. Cope up with them. In physiological, the fatigue element exactly. and uh, other mm -hmm. things. And if it, it is prolonged over time, uh, it contributes towards many diseases mm -hmm. as well. Then behavioral symptoms that you're not coping up, you're not satisfied, and the behavioral outcomes are not like related with the uh, required behavior. Which I think is the most destructive one because something that is becoming a part of your behavior is very definitely right. very, <coughs> very stressful. Right. Very right. Sir, uh, as we have sources and the uh, consequences of stress, then my question is that how they are related to one another? Okay, uh, there is an integrated model mm -hmm. of all the factors which we have already discussed. It starts from the potential sources. The first potential source is environmental factors, mm -hmm. as we have discussed, economic uncertainty, political un uncertainty, organizational factors, mm -hmm. individual factors. These will uh, like contribute towards the stress, experience of stress of an individual. And uh, here comes the role of individual preferences, individual differences, job experience, social support, and these are the moderators. Uh, if they are there positively, they will reduce the stress. If they are not there, they definitely in stress will be increased. And three other outcomes which we recently discussed, physiological, like headache, high mm -hmm. blood pressure, mm -hmm. heart diseases, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, psychological anxiety, depression, decrease in job satisfaction, behavioral, productivity, mm -hmm. definitely it, it might be yes. reduced, absenteeism, increased exactly. turnover, it can also be increased. Okay. Sir, there is this inverted U relationship which is between stress and job performance. What is it? Very good. Uh, here we can refer this, uh, to the slide. There is a graph. If performance is low mm. and if uh, performance is high and uh, towards the other side, stress, it might be low or it might be towards the higher side. Okay, if performance is low and uh, stress is towards the lower side, it shows us that there is a, a very low relationship because mm. we're not very stressful and mm. we, uh, we're, we're not, not concerned well. about the yeah, performance yeah. as well. And if performance requirement is increasing, it will increase the stress level as well. Exactly. Mm. And if stress is towards the highest side, it will also contribute towards the like uh, lo low lower performance. performance, yes, lower definitely. performance. Okay. So if performance requirement is less, pe person will be less stressful. Mm -hmm. If it is towards the higher or very highest side, it will also reduce the performance. But if it, it is towards like like uh, mediocre side, exactly. then definitely uh, uh, you, uh, we can say that smaller amount of stress might be required. Hmm. But that should be positive towards mm -hmm. the performance. Exactly. Okay. Uh, anyone has another question? Alia, would you like to ask a question? So uh, we have studied a lot about stress up till now. Okay. Means, uh, in terms of organization. We perceive that the stress affects negatively the right. performance of the individual. individual. Right. Then how this stress is managed within an organization in order to improve the performance? Very right. Okay, uh, as uh, stress is, if it, it, it like goes beyond a certain level, it is not required. Mm. It is not like uh, acceptable. Uh, there are certain approaches. Uh, first of all, we'll discuss the individual approaches. A individual can manage stress by uh, managing the time properly, time management approach, then increasing physical exercise. It is a very uh, much important thing. And uh, it is that thing which is nowadays lacking in our daily lives. It must be there. Because, sir, uh, when uh, usually individuals go to an organization, nine to five job they right are right. doing, they come back home and then they uh, get indulged in the homely activities. Right. They do not take out time to exercise for themselves, which definitely ex uh, affects their mental ability as well. Very right. Very right. Okay. Uh, then, uh, as per your, your, your comment, there comes the role of time exactly. management. 
okay uh, uh, then comes the relaxation training mm -hmm. uh, relaxation training might be like meditation and there is a study if you meditate half an hour daily it can reduce your uh, sleep requirement sleeping mm -hmm. requirement two hours mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so uh, if if you are uh, like relaxing and you are like uh, 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 increasing your physical stamina it will reduce your stress and okay. it will increase your productivity Active. as well and uh, then expanding social support mm. okay yes, there is another uh, research which says that if physical like uh, uh, you can say stress is there and there are certain symptoms which are showing us that there are physical losses to us we can like revive them and if there are uh, mental losses and uh, uh, mental losses means anxiety depression they are not that much recoverable but now latest research, research says that mind can revive Oh. as well and it can revive certain like uh, new uh, you can say it, it's 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 uh, certain elements it's it can uh, change its harmonic variation and wow. uh, certain thing mm -hmm. so it can revive as well mm -hmm. physically and uh, you can say psychologically then comes the organizational approaches here we have to improve uh, like personnel selection that those people should be selected which like can cope up with that stress because in certain organization uh, the job requirement is very stressful yes. like if we uh, uh, take an example of stock market commodity yes. market uh, these are the markets which are always like very stressful exactly then comes the role of training use of realistic goal setting because unrealistic goals will contribute towards Definitely. more stress yes. then redesigning of jobs towards like reducing the stress then there should be an increased employee invol very involvement very as very well very. because if you will be like involved in decision making exactly. you will own that that thing and uh, you will think that uh, this thing is not being imposed to us because if 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 there is a feeling that something is being imposed we know mm. it that yes. uh, even if being a student something is imposed by the instructor uh, we are stressful exactly uh, improved organizational communication because communication or uh, you can say lack of proper communication channels uh, will increase stress as well offering employee sabbaticals sabbatical leaves incentives are basically basically these are leave incentives All right. mm -hmm. that uh, if you want to become like absent from mm -hmm. the job time away from work mm -hmm. it is also a term uh, and in japan japanese are workaholic yes and uh, they like work work and work that's it and they are like uh, uh, they are uh, uh, you can say made towards like leave uh, the organization and uh, they are sent towards the forced leaves sabbatical <laughs> yeah. yeah. okay then uh, establishment of corporate wellness programs overall uh, these might be like uh, social get togethers and and uh, like uh, you can say the psychological side of it uh, uh, of an employee physically you can like uh, create certain things you can create uh, 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 an environment where they can uh, do exercise and things like that so it means that these are the factors that contribute to minimize the stress and to optimize the performance of the employee. Yeah, very right. Definitely. Okay, uh, the next thing that we're going to discuss is power. Uh, power basically is something uh, where uh, there is a setting in which there are two individuals A and B and when A has uh, the authority, enough authority to drive or to make the B person work according to what A requires that is power that is A is having power over B and dependency is that term in which uh, B is dependent on A in the terms that uh, B will do whatever A is required to do because of the authority or power of A. Uh, basically, uh, if we refer to uh, a, a theory of motivation, there was a need, need for power. Yes. And power is a human need that we want to influence and control others. And uh, in a certain situation, power is a capacity of an individual that one can control and influence the other. And as Komal told, power is applicable and uh, you can say valid or more more you can say effective in a situation where one is dependent on that person who is like uh, trying to be more powerful and this is the concept of dependency mm -hmm. that uh, b is a person and b's relationship to a when mm -hmm. a possesses something that b requires mm -hmm. okay then 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 you can say that uh, that person is like mm, can uh, exert the Anna, you have a question uh, yes mm -hmm. sir when we talk about leadership mm -hmm. 
uh, it means that how power and leadership are associated with one another. Very right and appropriate question. Because uh, we all know that uh, leadership has a very important role in an organization, in, in, in any setting, in any like political setting, in any economic setting, in an mm -hmm. organizational setting. And uh, this is a concept which we will uh, discuss in uh, detail later on. But here, the leadership is basically that uh, we must uh, focus on the goal and goal achievement. Leadership requires that goal should be compatible with the organizational setting and followers as well. Uh, and uh, it should be like focused towards downward, mm -hmm. participatory yes. uh, sort of uh, leadership. And uh, the focus of research is leadership styles and relationship with the followers. It is like uh, today's uh, you can say focus of research, what is the uh, relationship between different leadership styles mm -hmm. and, and the uh, work of followers. followers. And then uh, the uh, role of power in leadership. Uh, it is used as a mean of achieving, achieving goals like, uh, because we are focusing upon that. And uh, here we require follower dependency mm -hmm. so that we can exert power. Uh, it is used to gain lateral and upward influence as mm -hmm. well. Okay, power can be like influenced uh, by the uh, uppers, and we can like influence the uppers by using the power. But uh, we'll discuss it later how it is possible. And here the research focuses the power tactics for gaining compliance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can say uh, that leadership, basic purpose of leadership is to achieve the goals, and the power should be used in the well, like same direction. If power is like misused, definitely mm -hmm. that is not appropriate leadership. It exactly. is power for the sake of power. But we must use power for the sake of exactly. achieving the organization. As goals. in you are trying to say that basically leadership is a very positive term yes. and a positive concept very in right, itself. Very right. uh, Bilal, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. In most of the organization, they give empowerment to their employees. Yeah. But in some organization, they think that there is some kind of mismanagement if you give them Power, power to, to some employee or yeah, department yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question is, what are the major bases of powers? Right. Okay, uh, so far as power is concerned, power resides with someone. Mm -hmm. But if that person like give a part or uh, you can say the full power towards uh, another employee or uh, subordinate, so can he or she can perform uh, the job in a better manner. That is known as empowerment. Yes. Okay, uh, first of all, there is a concept of cursive power, cursive power. power of punishment, a power base dependent upon like fear. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, we uh, know it as well that in families, in like political parties, this sort of power do exist, but that is not recommended. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, other type is reward power. Yes. Uh, it is like a compliance achieved based on the ability to distribute rewards that others view as valuable. If I think that something is valuable to me and that will be given to me mm -hmm. if I'll do something and uh, the distribution of that reward resides with someone else, mm -hmm. that someone else can exert power on me but exactly. I'll do it like uh, positively, mm -hmm. I'll do it like uh, for, on my own. And for I'll be for, for the reward basically. Yeah, because it okay. is based on reward. Then comes uh, the legitimate power, mm -hmm. and uh, it is the power which is like uh, uh, exists in the organization. The power a person receives as a result of his or her own position in the formal hierarchy of an organization, senior junior relationship, boss subordinate relationship, and uh, that kinship boss can come in this kind of power. Uh, kinship. Kinship for uh, kingship, for example, uh, uh, the things that Henrys and all those kings. Yeah, very right. Uh, th these are legitimate power. Exactly. Uh, given them through a system, exactly. whether that is like uh, kingdom, whether mm -hmm. uh, those are like 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 uh, democracies, uh, and in an organization, if there is a departmental head, uh, and that departmental head became head of department because organization chose like, him like chose or her to do so. All right. Okay. So there is this thing called personal power as well, in which uh, there is a concept in formation power, where uh, an individual has access or power because of the information he has. You're very right. Basically, uh, as different individuals have different attributes, different skills, different competences, and for organization, these things are very important. 
if one have like information exactly. one one has an uh, has expertise in something definitely that person has a uh, higher bargaining power exactly. and that mm -hmm. bargaining power because the organizational dependency is there mm -hmm. and organization is dependent toward that exactly. thing we, which we have recently discussed but so in case of information power the person is having information that is why right. he's power whereas in the case of expert power yeah. he has certain kind of skills Skill. that very is right. why he's very powerful. right very right mm -hmm. and uh, the main thing is the organizational dependency on that on expertise that or on that information okay. then comes the referent power influence based on uh, possession by an individual of desirable resources or personal, personal traits. traits another thing and the charismatic power mm -hmm. the charisma is a very important exactly. thing and for a leader especially for a leader especially charismatic leadership mm -hmm. uh, an extension of referent power stemming from an individual's personality and interpersonal style mm -hmm. and if someone is charismatic that person has like built in uh, charisma in his or her personality and that is a very strong exactly. source of power they say leadership. they say that uh, mr bhutto had this charisma zulfikar yeah, yeah, yeah. bhutto qaid e azam yes. qaid e azam and definitely lot many other things and uh, another thing uh, charisma has nothing to do with only the physical appearance or physical traits exactly there are certain like individual who in their areas very were very expert mm -hmm. were very dedicated committed like nelson mandela exactly basically yes. he was and he is a very charismatic mm. leader Okay. Uh, Abdul Rahim, do you have a question? <coughs> Sir, as we say that uh, dependency is the key to power, okay. then uh, how it is related to power? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, first of all, we'll discuss what is uh, dependency in general. The greater B's dependency on A, the greater the power A has over B. B. Mm -hmm. First of all, possession control of scarce organizational resources that other need makes a manager powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know yes. it. It exists in the organization. access to uh, optional resources like multiple suppliers are there and you're controlling it, it reduces the uh, resource holders power yes. if there are multiple suppliers definitely the dependent dependency will be reduced Reduce. and here comes the concept of uh, economics we know it as monopoly exactly. if yes. someone has monopoly in something hmm. definitely everyone will be dependent, dependent on that person them. okay then uh, there are three things which like creates dependency like more strong first of all the importance of that thing for which you are dependent on mm -hmm. that person scarcity of the resource mm. it will increase the dependency and non substitutability if that thing cannot be like substituted exactly. by another thing another resource mm -hmm. another skill definitely it will be more important, more important. and others will be more dependent exactly. on that thing okay what are power tactics sir okay these are the ways in which individual translate power bases into specific actions like power is nothing unless and until it is properly utilized mm -hmm. okay if one is powerful and he or she is not able to use that thing through certain tactics or through uh, certain operational thing it is useless first of all reason or reasoning the first tactic uh, reason where is very strong you can like justify that thing in a strong manner then friendliness yes Okay, and another uh, powerful like tool, coalition. We create certain bonds, certain uh, coalition with a group, and definitely that group will like give me the power or bring something. Then bargaining power. Mm -hmm. Definitely, if I possess something and I can bargain in a, a proper manner, that is a very useful tactic. Assertiveness. I'm very assertive. I can like pressurize certain things, and I, I can uh, get the job done. Mm. then higher authority definitely it is a tactic and it is uh, like legitimate uh, power given by the organization and then certain sanctions that i can sanction certain resources certain things i can facilitate someone through like uh, uh, flexibility in the uh, uh, organizational like uh, structure of rules regulation policies that is also one of the very important tactics so so we can say that power is a need or capacity of an individual and tactics are the those means to impose or enforce those yeah, uh, this right. uh, power very authority right. very right very right very right uh, there is this thing called use of power tactics ali would you like to ask a certain question related to it yes sir uh, um, as i said i real that that uh, we have studied that power is a need or it is a capacity of an individual now mm. he must have some ways to mm. utilize that power and what are those uses or what are those tactics and how these right, are right. implied mm -hmm. basically it has two major sides when managers influences like superiors see 
and then when managers influenced subordinates okay uh, you can use power to like uh, uh, influence your superiors your, the people with higher authority and people with lower authority if we are like uh, managing or influencing the superiors the most popular tactics are reasoning mm-hmm. then coalition with them Friendly. friendliness bargaining at the midway <coughs> and towards the least popular side assertiveness and higher high authority, authority. Mm-hmm. and these are the do- those things if we like move towards uh, more higher authority so that that higher authority can influence the person i am trying to manage like th- this is not popular tactic and towards the other thing if if uh, we want to like influence the subordinates the most popular are again reasoning assertiveness is there as well friendliness coalition at the midway and towards the lower popularity side mm-hmm. are bargaining mm-hmm. higher authority and sanctions, sanctions. if we like restrict them of doing something we use like our legitimate power mm-hmm. we apply certain like d- disciplinary or uh, regulatory exactly. actions towards them these are again the least, pa- uh, least popular least thing popular so thing. we can say that uh, the the use of these tactics depends upon the person b on whom you are you are enforcing or you are using that power okay uh, this topic has a very uh, you can say broad s- scope mm-hmm. uh, first of all there uh, comes Uh, the individual who is using the power then comes the person who is like facing that, that thing, thing or being uh, who is being managed mm. and then there is certain situation organizational factors mm. and all will be like uh, contributing toward the selection of the most appropriate tactic mm. and uh, we cannot say that uh, this is better or best exactly. it all depends on these on factors on these situation okay. yeah anyone has a question how can we define power in groups and what is meant by the term coalition okay uh, so far as power in groups is concerned coalition means the cluster or clusters of individuals mm. who temporarily come together to achieve a specific purpose mm. again that coalition uh, might be legitimate or it might be legitimate as well yes. if you are like uh, developing such a cluster for your own individual sake definitely it is not an organizational requirement mm-hmm. that is discouraged mm-hmm. but if it is towards achieving like organizational betterment that this is a positive thing uh, okay uh, then in groups there are certain things like we want to seek to uh, we seek to maximize their uh, size to attain influence okay uh, the larger the group the larger the influence it might have we seek a broad and diverse constituency for support of other objectives if it it, it has a uh, it has an objective with a wider sp- scope mm-hmm. definitely uh, there are uh, other departments or other things which will be like supporting uh, occur more frequently in organization with higher task and resource interdependencies because there is a higher interdependency then a group is a must and coalition is a must uh, and it occur more frequently if tasks are standardized and mm-hmm. routine okay uh, groups are there then as well so uh, 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 as an individual uh, there is a human need as well known as social need mm-hmm. okay? yes, being a human being and uh, uh, and in an uh, organization or in a group as well we want to be related to a group so that we will be like safeguarded exactly in in uh, rainy days exactly. i would say and through thick and thin and that will be supportive to us Now we are moving towards the third concept which is interrelated to power and uh, which is called politics. Uh, Bilal, do you have a question related? Yes, sir, I have a question. Uh, what is political power and what are the factors influencing the political action and is this actions are ethical or not? Or non-ethical. Very, right, very, right. very good question. First of all, politics is all about managing the power or power structure. Mm-hmm. It is related to the power. Something we have been discussing already. Yeah, which yes. we have been discussing. Uh, political behavior is uh, like uh, it is comprised of activities that are not required as part of one's formal role in the organization but that influence or attempt to influence mm-hmm. the distribution of advantages and disadvantages within the organization yes so we can say the manager must know the role of politics and how to use it mm-hmm. definitely positively first of all legitimate political behavior is 
normal everyday politics yes. related to like uh, get the job done illegitimate political behavior which is not required mm. extreme political behavior that violates the implied rules of the game mm. like definitely if you are uh, using the power for the sake of power if you are like gaining power for the sake of your individual exactly. interest definitely it is and illegitimate and some people even uh, derive pleasure out of it you yeah, are very right very right. Uh, it is not desirable it is not, desi it is not desirable there is this quotation called beauty lies in the eye of the beholder okay. same goes for politics yeah. which it says that politics is in the eye of the beholder very right yes. uh, basically uh, two extremes are there we uh, want to relate the politics with the effective management, management. style if label is that someone is political there are uh, certain things related to that behavior like they blame others the apple polishing things yes. <laughs> passing the buck uh, covering your rear okay then scheming there are mm, people yes. who are very like schematic and whistle blowers mm. are there as well <laughs> and then cunning arrogant exactly. but what the positive side effective management uh, fixing responsibility exactly all the politically developing working relationships definitely there uh, will be someone who will be demonstrating lo loyalty, loyalty as well loyalty as well delegating authority documenting decisions planning career minded astute like yes, a person who is very like improving good, efficiency uh, yeah, for yeah, the organization yeah, yeah. confident hmm. so uh, politics is not bad at exactly. all our experience in our country might be bad toward exactly. like uh, politics. politics but generally it is a concept how to manage power in a better manner so that the message uh, can be better off mm -hmm. and those messages can be like represented exactly uh, towards like government or higher authority and uh, definitely there will be some factors that are uh, influencing these political behaviors what are the, those factors yeah okay uh, before going to that uh, let me uh, answer the uh, question asked by bilal mm -hmm. whether that political action is ethical okay. or not yes. okay the first question here uh, arises is the political action motivated by self serving interest or the organizational goals interest. okay if the uh, uh, we want to like uh, uh, answer the question whether political action is ethical or not first question is is the political action motivated by self serving interest or organizational goals or interest definitely if it is for self serving interest mm -hmm. it is unethical if it yes. is for organization it is ethical then comes the second question does the political action uh, respect the rights of individuals or not if okay. yes then it is eth ethical if not it is unethical and, and the third question is is the political activity fair and equitable if yes ethical if not and it is unethical. Unethical. It, it is all about uh, being ethical or non ethical yeah very right then uh, the thing which, which we have already discussed the, uh, the factors that influence political behavior individual factor high self monitors if people are there definitely uh, they can exert higher uh, pressure internal locus of control people high mac people macavely approach macavelianism mm -hmm. uh, organizational investment mm -hmm. then perceived job alternatives and expectation of success and then the organizational factors are reallocation of resources promotion opportunities low trust low ambiguity zero sum reward democratic mm -hmm. high performance these all things will uh, lead us towards the political behavior exactly. yes. if these things are favorable positive individual is not using uh, power or politics for the sake of individual interest and organization is supportive mm -hmm. uh, towards uh, high achievement and uh, supportive uh, towards like uh, motivating or satisfaction then uh, uh, the politics or political behavior will be towards moderate or lower side or positive side and favorable outcome towards that political behavior if that is positive that will be rewarding Rewards. or we want to avert punishment, punishment. or, or uh, it will be other way around exactly then perception of organizational politics first of all decrease job satisfaction it will decrease job yes. satisfaction mm -hmm. if i think that organization is very political, political. and politics is prevailing in exactly. it and that is not positive it will increase anxiety stress stress turnover and it will reduce performance, performance. performance. which is ultimately okay. negative for the organization for that thing people will like lead towards certain defensive behavior exactly they mm. will avoid action mm. okay they yes. will avoid blame they will avoid Changes. change and they will they will be very defensive they will not be participating in okay. any major activity of any organization okay 
And the last so, thing. Impression management, I was about to ask, what yeah, is this yeah. concept? And the last concept of this, this like, uh, program is impression management. Okay. Someone is like uh, uh, having different mindset or thinking about uh, the scenario differently, but mm. uh, he or she can Im manage impression that I am very positive about it. And this is the thing which we usually use in interviews as well. Yes, sir. Okay. The process by which individuals attempt to control the impression others from of them. Mm. Uh, uh, okay, uh, impression management techniques are conformity. Apparently, we are very oh, like conforming excuses, mm. apologies, self-promotion, flattery, Fairness. favors, and associations. Okay. In today's program, we have discussed the concepts stress, power, and politics, and how an individual has to deal with these concepts within an organization, keeping in context organizational behavior subject. Uh, viewers, in the next episode, we'll discuss the concept of leadership. I'll thank you all for being with us, especially Mr. Fawad Bashir, our expert. And with this, I'd like to say, study well, Allah Hafiz.